Welcome to the Hand in Hand with God YouTube channel, where the sermons are filled with the Word of God, so you can apply God's truth to your life as you glean them from the teachings that are brought to you by myself, Pastor Daryl Clausen, but more importantly, they're brought to you by the Holy Spirit. Apply God's truth to your life so that He can mold you and shape you into who He wants you to be so that you can shine bright for Him through your words and actions. God bless you as you watch the video. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Hand in Hand with God, a floating fountain lifestyle. A time when we gather together in a corporate setting to delve into the Word of God, and to glean the truths that are contained within the Word of God, from the Word of God. And we work with the Holy Spirit from this point on to apply those truths to our lives so that the Word of God can renew our minds, therefore transform us, so that we will know what God's good, perfect, pleasing will is. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father God Almighty King, we thank you so much, Father, for your hand upon our lives and all that you've done for us, God. We praise you for your faithfulness and we thank you, God, for this opportunity to delve into your word so that we can take the truths from your word and apply them to our lives, Father God, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Father God, we dedicate this time to you. And I pray, Lord God, that as I deliver your message, I do so in a clear, concise manner so that your children who hear the truths that are contained within your word with open hearts will receive your truths, Father God, and work with the Holy Spirit to apply your truth to their lives, Father, so that they can be molded and shaped into who you want them to be. And I pray the same for myself, Father God. We thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, Amen. My name is Daryl Clausen, and I'll be sharing the Word of God with you today. Today's sermon is entitled, Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, and You. Today we are going to be looking at the significance of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus, and how they relate to you and your relationship with God. Abraham was chosen by God to be the avenue through which all the nations of the world would be blessed. Even though Abraham did not have any children, God promised Abraham that he would have so many descendants, such that if someone would attempt to count them, it would be like trying to count the stars in the sky or the grains of sand that make up the seashore. God told Abraham that he had the land of Canaan reserved for his descendants. Abraham believed God's promises, that he would have many descendants, and that God would give Abraham's descendants the land that he had for them. God's promise to Abraham that he would have a son came to pass, and Abraham and Sarah gave him the name Isaac. Some years after the birth of Isaac, God tested Abraham and told him to sacrifice his son Isaac. When God told Abraham to sacrifice his only son Isaac, through whom God had told him that all God's promises to Abraham would come to fruition, Abraham believed that if he was obedient to God and sacrificed Isaac to God, that God would raise Isaac from the dead. In the end, God ended up stopping Abraham from sacrificing his son Isaac and provided a ram to be sacrificed instead. Abraham ended up not sacrificing Isaac because at the last minute God told him not to and provided a ram to be sacrificed in Isaac's stead. Due to the fact that Abraham believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead if he sacrificed him, in the spiritual realm it was as if Abraham had received Isaac back from the dead anyways. For this you can look at Hebrews 11, verse 9. Due to the fact that Abraham believed what God had told him, it was credited to Abraham as him being righteous. And God fulfilled his promises 
and all the nations are blessed because of Abraham's promised descendant and that God came to earth as Jesus Christ so that each individual could have their sins forgiven and have a healthy relationship with God. When we believe God's word, we, like Abraham, have faith. Therefore, we are called children of Abraham. It is with this faith that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came to die for our sins and God raised him from the dead. Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, and you. Galatians 3, verses 6 to 29. To see just how Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, and you are connected, we are going to be looking at Galatians 3, verses 6 to 29, which says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Verse 10, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all these things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed, where the promise is made, he saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, the law, which was four hundred and thirty years after, cannot disannul, that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Verses 26 and 27. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And verse 29, And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. 
from this passage, we are going to look at verses 6 to 10, 13, 14, 18, verses 24 and 25, and 29, and see how Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, and you relate to each other. Faith is faith. Therefore, the faith that we have in Jesus Christ is the same faith that Abraham had that God would raise Isaac from the dead if he sacrificed him. Therefore, we are righteous with the same faith that Abraham had in the promises of God through which he was credited as being righteous. Abraham is called the father of faith because he believed the promises that God said regarding through him all the nations of the earth would be blessed. In the spiritual realm, faith is how things operate. It could be said that faith is the currency of the spiritual realm. In the natural realm, children behave like their parents, and the same is true in the spiritual realm. This is why it is said that we Christians are the children of Abraham, because we utilize the same faith to receive our righteousness through Jesus Christ that Abraham did and God credited him as being righteous. Not only was Abraham's faith strong enough to believe that God would provide the land for his descendants which he had promised, nor was it only strong enough to believe that if he did sacrifice Isaac that God would raise him from the dead. It was also strong enough for Abraham to believe that Jesus Christ would come and take away the sins of the world. Therefore, when we have faith believing that Jesus Christ is God who came and died for our sins and that God raised him from the dead, then we can receive the blessings that God had promised Abraham. Therefore, with faith as an option, we have the opportunity to live by faith and not under the law. Now if we attempt to live obeying the law, we will be expected to keep the entire law. This is impossible. Therefore, we will be ensuring that we are living under a curse because we will be unable to obey every aspect of the law every moment of our lives. When we have faith that Jesus Christ died for our sins, we are redeemed from the curse of the law. This means that the curse that comes upon people who are unable to keep every aspect of the law, which is everybody, has been lifted from those of us who have faith in Jesus Christ. The significance of this verse and how it relates to Jesus is that the cross on which Jesus was hung when he was crucified was made out of wood. Therefore, it is said, that Jesus took the curse for us because he hung on a tree. Jesus took the curse upon himself which we were to receive because of our sin. In verse 14 we see that it was God's plan for all the nations of the earth to be blessed through the lineage of Abraham. And the only way that this would be possible is if God came to earth as a human and took upon himself the curse of the law, which we should have received due to our inability to obey the entire law. In the same manner that Abraham was classified as righteous because of his faith, we as Gentiles who also have faith in Christ Jesus will receive the promise that God gave to Abraham because of our faith. Here in verse 18, we see the comparison of the law to the promise. God is always faithful to his promises, and his promises never expire. The inheritance promised by God cannot be delivered by both the promise and the fulfillment of the law. It is either one or the other, and receiving the inheritance via a promise is more secure than attempting to receive it through the law. If we were to receive the inheritance, by us keeping the law, we would never receive our inheritance because it is impossible for us to completely obey the law. However, because we receive the inheritance based on our belief 
that God's promise to give us the inheritance that's based on our faith in Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we are guaranteed to receive the inheritance because Jesus Christ has already fulfilled the law for us. In Galatians 3, the Apostle Paul is teaching the Galatians that we are saved through faith in Christ Jesus, not by obeying the law. The law that the Apostle Paul is talking about is the law of Moses, which are the decrees that God gave to Moses to give to the Israelites after they left Egypt. The Apostle Paul is teaching that the purpose of the law of Moses was to teach us that we need a Savior. Jesus Christ is the Savior, and when we by faith receive Him as such, we are justified. Our justification by faith through Christ Jesus means that God sees us as if we never sinned. Verse 25 says that once we are justified by faith, we do not have the schoolmaster, which is referred to as the law, over top of us by displaying our guilt for what we could not fulfill. Nor is the law held over our heads for something that we must achieve to be right standing before God. Therefore, because we are justified through our faith in Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we remain justified through our faith in Jesus Christ, not by fulfilling a list of do's and don'ts. In verse 29, because of our faith in Christ Jesus, we are the same as if we were the offspring of Abraham. As we are the offspring of Abraham by faith, we are able to receive the promise that God gave to Abraham. Abraham and his promises from God are ours in the same way that people who are a part of a family receive a share of the inheritance. Abraham is called the father of faith and he received God's promises because of that faith. God desired to bless humanity through Abraham. Every human being has the opportunity to receive these blessings because the blessings are received by faith. In the same manner, that our earthly fathers give us an earthly inheritance, our heavenly inheritance from our heavenly Father comes through us having faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And this is the same faith through which Abraham, by God, was classified as righteous. Abraham, Isaac, Jesus, and you. Conclusion. In conclusion, all four of these people are important. Abraham is an example for how we are to live by faith. Both Isaac and Jesus are fulfillments of God's promises. It is important to include you in this list with Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus because it is you who makes the choice as to whether or not you will have faith in Jesus Christ. Isaac and us are similar in that God tested Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. Abraham passed the test, and God provided a ram to be sacrificed instead of Isaac. We ourselves should have died for our own sin, but God sent Jesus Christ to take our place. In the same manner that the ram took Isaac's place on the altar, Jesus Christ took our place on the cross. Faith is the key to our relationship with God, therefore, our eternal life. If we do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who came to earth to die for our sins, and that God raised Him from the dead, then we are not able to partake in the promises that God promised Abraham. It is God's desire for you to be able to partake in the blessings that He promised Abraham through faith in Christ Jesus. However, the choice is yours. It is up to you whether you are going to live your life by faith or under the law. Some people believe that if you are good enough, you will get into heaven. This is a lie from Satan. There are a few things that you need to know if you believe 
and it is through your good works, actions, and thoughts that you will get into heaven. First, you have to know what exactly it is that you have to do to get into heaven. And once you read what is contained in the Law of Moses, you quickly realize that there is no possible way for you to keep each and every one of those laws, each and every moment of every day. The next thing you must know is that according to God's level of holiness, the good deeds that we do are perceived by God as filthy rags. In light of these two facts, that you will never be able to keep the entire law and that God perceives our good deeds as filthy rags. Believing in the death of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and his resurrection for hope for eternal life, having faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God to have eternal life. If it was remotely true that people could enter heaven based on good works, then there would be a chance that we could fulfill the law. However, this is impossible to do because of our sinful nature. It is only through faith in Jesus Christ that we can receive a complete pardon for our sins and have eternal life. It is impossible for you and I to be justified in God's eyes by obeying the entire law. And after we have received salvation through faith in Christ Jesus, it is impossible for us to remain justified based upon our good works. Our justification starts with our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died for our sins. And it continues with our faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died for our sins. Let's pray. I invite you to pray this corporate prayer with me in which there's an opportunity for you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that yet. And we will also talk to God about Him helping us live our Christian life by faith in Jesus Christ. If God has placed something on your heart, then take that up with Him first. And then you can join us wherever we are in the corporate prayer. For the corporate prayer, the words will be on the screen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the example that Abraham is for how I should live by faith. God, I thank you that you provided a ram for Abraham to have sacrificed instead of Isaac. Lord God, I thank you that you came to earth as Jesus Christ, that he took my place on the cross, died for my sins, and that you raised Christ from the dead to give me hope for eternal life. Father God, in the same manner that Abraham was credited as righteous because of his faith, I apply my faith to the gospel of Jesus Christ as your Son and ask that you forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you that the Holy Spirit now dwells within me and I ask that I be baptized with the Holy Spirit I ask, Father God, that you help me live by faith. Father, now that I am choosing to apply faith and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, I ask that you help me to strengthen my faith, that I will not attempt in any way, shape, or form to receive my righteousness by works. Through my faith in Christ Jesus, I have received my righteousness. And I thank you for this gift of righteousness that you have given to me. Thank you for all that you have done for me, Father God. I pray that my relationship with you will strengthen each and every day. I ask this in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. If you meaningfully prayed that prayer, you are now a member of the family of God. You are a Christian. I encourage you to find a local church who will help you grow spiritually and baptize you in water. For the rest of you, as we pray that prayer, you also talk to God and ask Him to help you live your Christian life by faith. So I pray that you 
keep that desire at the forefront of your Christian walk and live your Christian life holding God's hand, walking with the Holy Spirit, being obedient to the Holy Spirit, and keeping your faith in Jesus Christ, trusting Him for your righteousness, and not looking to yourself for the righteousness that you can only get through faith in Jesus Christ. I'll close with a word of prayer. Father God, Almighty King, I thank you, Father God, that our righteousness comes through Christ Jesus, that our righteousness is because of our faith in Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, that each of us would always keep our eyes focused on Christ for our righteousness and not take our eyes off of Christ and look to ourselves for our righteousness, Father God, because it is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that you see us as righteous. May we always remember that, Father God. And Lord, as we journey through our lives with you by our side, holding your hand, Father God, I pray that each of us would grow in you each and every day, that our relationship with you would strengthen each and every day, Father God, and that we would fulfill the destiny that you have for each of us, Father. May you shine brightly through our words and actions into the lives of those whom we come into contact with, Father God, and may they come to know you as their Lord and Savior as well. I pray, Lord, that you keep each of us safe and bring us back safely next time, Father God, so that we can delve into your word and glean the truths from it and apply them to our lives with help from the Holy Spirit, Father God. We thank you and praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you for coming to Hand in Hand with God, a flowing fountain lifestyle, to glean from God's Word the truths that are contained within it. I pray that you choose to take the truths that you learned today and work with the Holy Spirit to apply them to your lives so that you will allow the Word of God to renew you because the Word of God transforms your mind so that you will know what God's good perfect pleasing will is. Go with God and no one else. Thanks again for watching. Do what God wants you to do. Obey Him. God bless you. We love you. Bye. God bless you. Go with God and no one else. Thanks for watching.